So, hi Anthony, we're filming a video just for you. Um, it's poor light and uh, it's at the beginning of a course the night before and we've just finished one so I'm trying to madly squeeze in the video for you. So this is a, a longbow and I'm just going to show you how to uh, first of all warm it up and string it and it's exactly the same for your flat bow. So the first thing you, you're going to want to do is, is think about how the bow's been made. So right in the centre of the handle here is where it's been trained to bend from. So on, when it was on the tiller, the bow was on, a, on another piece of wood like this, being held still, and then it was being bent right from the very tip, from the bottom knock and the top knock. Now if we bend this bow in any other way, so if I was to hold it at the top and hold it off centre like this, or from here, then I'd be bending the bow in an unnatural way, in a way that it's not been trained to bend. So it's not been designed in that way. So to bend this, the only other time um, you're going to do it when warming the bow up on the floor or warming the bow up in the hand um, or once it's strung is by only holding it in the very centre and at the very tip of the limb. So you can do something called floor tillering to start with or maybe just before that you can just warm it up in your hand like this. Now there's a little bit of controversy as to around um, whether this does anything at all. It doesn't really matter. Um, in my opinion, you know, it does do something. But um, even if you don't think it does, um, what you are doing is giving yourself a moment just to think about what you're going to do. So this is warming the outer fibres slightly. And then you can put the bottom limb, the end with the, um, the slightly different knock and the, the timber hitch or the bogey's knot, straight into the bottom of your foot. Hold the bow right in the centre with the back of the bow facing you. So on your bow, that's very obvious because it's a flat bow. With a long bow, this is the belly and this is the back. So I'm going to hold it at the very centre and then I'm going to put my hand on the very tip of the limb. And this is the same for your flat bow. So at that point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start flexing the limb. So this is warming the bow really prior to you stringing it. And you want to do this a good, um, a good 30, 40 times. You know, and in cold weather, which you're probably not going to get down in Perth, but in cold weather, then um, try and do that as much as you can. Um, we're, you know, it's a real bow breaker by not warming the bow up. So as you're doing this, you'll start to feel the fibres reorientate and you'll start to feel the bow kind of, for want of a better word, kind of give in and want to bend a little bit more each time you do it. And I'm doing this quite gentle. It might, it might not look like that, but I am actually doing this very gently. You, there's a thing, there's a point with the bow where you'll pull it and it doesn't want to go any further. Whenever you feel that, don't pull it anymore because you'll just be stressing the fibres. So I'm only bending this to the point where the bow goes, I don't want to bend anymore. And then I'm just letting the pressure off. So that's probably enough for now. Now there's two ways to string. You can string it um, with a stringer, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, which I would really recommend um, because it really is the most efficient way of stringing the bow um, and not putting any unnecessary stress onto the limbs. There is another way, and I only ever use this for light bows. So this is a very light target bow, and this one's about 50 pounds. So with this one, um, all I do is I put my index finger and my thumb either side of the string here. Now if you kind of come around the back of this, when you knock it, you end up getting your fingers stuck. Now two things happen with that. One is your fingers get stuck and two you can't get them out. So you have to unstring it again. So put your thumb and your index finger bent right next to it. And then from the middle of the bow, it's the same as warming it, but I'm going to pull towards my hips and I'm going to push up with my hand. So it's the same motion, uh, sorry, it's two different motions, but at the same time. So I'm going to pull with my bottom hand right on the centre of the bow, keeping the bottom knot locked in against my boot there. If this flicks up or, or moves, then it's not going to work. So that's got to be locked in there. You don't have to stand on it, but just having the pressure of it going into the side of your foot or your heel is enough. Hold it right in the centre, hand at the top, and I'm just going to push very gently and progressively up towards the knock and slide it over the top and before you let go just check the bow have a look at the bottom limb have a look at the top limb and then just look at the to make sure the screen, screen string is located properly in the notch and once it is the bow should be strung and you'll have your your brace height there with your brace height on your bow um, 
I think we did it at five and a half inches for yours, um, as discussed. Um, so you can you can check that. Make sure whenever you shoot your bow that that brace height hasn't moved. So with your fist and your thumb, measure where the string is where you first string it, and remember that measurement. So if it's you know in the middle part of your thumb or if it's at the top of your thumb, depending on how big your hands are, remember that measurement. And every time you string it, you should be getting that same. If it ever slips, then quite a few different things can happen. But most, most probable is that you'll get something called wrist slap. And that's where the string, as you draw the bow up and shoot your home guard, the string will keep hitting you in the hand. If that happens, it's probably a good indication that the string slipped a bit. In which case, um, you know, I'll do another video um, and put it on the website. But just contact me and I'll let you know what to do. So that's the first stage of stringing. You know, you've got the, the string on there. And I'll pop that off and just show you it here again quickly. So that's how you do string it. So you hold it, the bottom limb and the bottom of the, of the hand, uh, and then your hand right in the centre of the bow. And you just flick the string off and then just let it come down gently. So just go through that again. Hold the bow right in the centre, put the bottom limb in the heel, uh, into your heel, finger and uh, thumb and index finger either side of the string, and then pull towards your hips, and then push up with your hand. And just progressively onto the knot. And it can be a bit tricky sometimes to get it over the knot. And that's why, as you saw there, I prefer using a stringer, because that's just putting a little bit of pressure on the, on the bow limbs that you don't necessarily need or want. So at this point, I can now start to warm the bow up because we're only halfway there of really getting ready to shoot. So now it's strung and there's going to be a lot of warmth going on and the fibres are going to be orientating. And now I can start to very gently pick up the weight. And uh, if I just grab an arrow at this point and string it, uh, and knock it, sorry, and then draw it back, you know, you probably won't snap it straight away, but after 20, 30, 40 different uh, times of doing that, you, you're quite likely to, to snap it. We've got to warm these bows up and get the fibres used to working again and get the bow. And, and at this point we can check the tiller and make sure we've got an even bend. You have to know your bow pretty well when you're doing that because most of the bows we make are character bows. And character bows have different features going on in the bows. Like this, this bow's got knots all the way along it. So we've tillered it to cater for those knots. So to the untrained eye, it might look a little bit out of tiller. But we're dealing with wood that's come straight out of the woods. So we're having to tiller it. When you do this, um, never go inside the bow. So never draw this to the point where your whole body's coming inside it. Because what you'll be doing at that point is overdrawing the bow. So you'll be drawing the bow further than it's been trained to bend. You'll be, um, you know, this has been bent, uh, trained to bend at 28 inches. So if I come right inside the string there, I'm probably drawing that up to about 32 inches, um, 34 uh, inches which is probably going to snap it because it's not been trained to do that. So when you do this, I recommend in a safe place, always pointing down the range, popping your arrow on and knocking it, and then drawing it up. And that way you give yourself some security because you're never going to go past the arrow coming over the handle. So you'll never overdraw the bow. And this is something that we want to be doing, again, um, you know, too much is never en uh, not enough. Just keep going, do 40, 50, 60 uh, like this, really warm the bow up until the point where you think and you feel like the bow's giving in. Um, not to the point where it's going to break, obviously, because it, it won't, but to the point where it feels like you can put an arrow on there and shoot it. You'll know what I mean, because the bow just kind of relaxes, which is what it's doing now. I can feel the bow coming in. And at this point, I could put an arrow on this and shoot it. So just to go over that again then, just for taking the string off, pop the bottom knock into your boot, into your heel, hold it dead centre, has to be dead centre because that's where it's been trained to bend from, index finger and thumb at the very top, and then just pop it off. So if you're going to use a stringer, you can buy um, quite expensive stringers which have a leather hood um, at each end of the string. To save yourself 20 quid, just get yourself a bit of paracord, or this is slightly thicker rope, and um, do any knot you want, any fixed end knot, and um, this is like a, a, a small hangsman's noose, but you could use an avenk or a timber hitch, and if you're not sure about how to do them, just Google them. Then they can pop over the top of the knocks. 
So this will be a bit difficult to show you, but if you just zoom back in again now. So one of these, we're just going to pop over the top of the knock and let it sit just there. And then the other one, I'm just going to pull that over just to get the other one on. We can slip over the bottom knock. So at this point, make sure the string's hanging down un uninterfered with. And then lift the other string. Now this bit's quite important because this string's got to stay above the knock. So otherwise when we when we um, put under this under pressure, this can sometimes slip into there. Don't worry, it happens. Just to start again and move that out so that we've got room for the string to sit in its knock. So the reason why this is such a good way and why it's um, preferred to for your warranty is because when you put your foot onto the string there, you're mimicking, you know, knocking an arrow, but um, you're pulling this dead centre and you can see it with your hand dead centre to where the arrow is going to be knocked. And at this point, just slowly put some pressure on. Make sure this is in the right place. And just slowly lift that. And at this point, we're just going to gently bring this up and down for 30, 40 goes, really gently, like this. And all this is doing is it's mimicking what I was doing before, warming the bow up.